Hello everyone. Yeah, so today I'm going to talk uh, about the, how to get the Instagram feed into SharePoint using SPFX. So a little bit uh, about me. So my name is Rashmi Okli. I currently work as a software developer in a company called Pension Protection Fund. And I've been contributing to the community for a couple of years. And these are some of the awesome badges I've received. And uh, yeah, this is my Twitter handle. So you can reach out anytime, even after the presentation or, or for any other things. Um, the solution was originally developed by Buse Kara. So that's why I got uh, a slide about her. So it's based on her blog post, um, which is on Medium. Uh, so I'll put a link in there, and these are her contact details, which she kindly shared with me. Um, so what I've done, so I've upgraded the solution from SPFX 111 to SPFX 116. So my approach was to start from scratch, uh, scaffolding a new solution using the latest SPFX 1.16. Obviously, there's a new version, SPFX 117, um, but yeah, that was done like three months ago and added all the libraries, uh, ensuring the latest were being used using the NPM install and copied the, um, the web part code from the old solution to the new solution and refactoring all the code to ensure compatibility with the latest library as well using React hooks. And now, uh, as uh, many of you who have been upgrading solution uh, to SPFX 116 or 1.14, uh, you might have been faced with ES uh, lint warnings, which ensure code quality. So I've replaced um, use concrete tabs instead of any to prevent runtime errors and improve maintainability and replace loose equality with struct equality. Um, so now demo time. So I'll show you the, how the solution is. Uh, so I've already got the solution loaded on the page and what it has, it has kind of a swiping effect. It's kind of showing um, the latest um, free feeds and when you kind of scroll left or right with a swiping effect, uh, um, you can go across all the posts that you want and when you over over each of the posts you have uh, the caption from the Instagram which uh, get displayed and then if you click on any of the posts it's going to open it onto Instagram. Okay let's have a look at some of the properties. So the most important um, property for that particular web part to work is a user token and the user token, um, you, you need to have both an Instagram and a Facebook account to be able to generate the user token. So on the GitHub repository where um, the web part is, uh, there's some instructions how you can generate the user token and the rest of the property like the name, account name, show Instagram account icon if you want to show the icon yes or no and the layout one third right is just to change the aspect ratio of the image. Here I've got a second uh, web part but just with the properties being filled so I have to show the Instagram icon uh, and then here it's kind of change the aspect ratio of the image to a bit smaller and to display the username. Yeah so that's uh, um, and then if you click on one particular post, uh, it will just open the Instagram post directly onto Instagram where you can engage uh, with a post if you need to. So now let's go back to the demo. Yeah, so in, in the code, the most important bit uh, is the call to the uh, Instagram endpoint. Um, here it's uh, calling the endpoint craft.instagram.com and I'm passing the user token I've set the web part property and uh, and then based on the status um, of a call, um, sorry, I'm just um, calling a function to handle success and one to handle failure. And behind the scene, what it does is just uh, set up the 
properties for any particular errors or just load um, uh, the feed. And then uh, I do have, if ever the status code is not 200 or 404, it will do a recursive loop to try to get the data until it's successful. But maybe it could be improved just to add a maximum of try of five. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, and uh, for get data, a kind of uh, function, I load it uh, whenever the comp component is mounted, but in that case, because I'm using React hook, I'm kind of calling it um, under the use effect function. So um, this is um, the rendering method. Uh, in here, I'm taking uh, the feeds I've received from the call and uh, iterating for each of the Instagram feed to create like a swiper slide. So I'm kind of using the React swiper library for that. Uh, that's where that control the swiper slide come from. And then depending on the media type, whether it's a video or image, uh, I'm kind of uh, using the correct control, whether it's a video or else I'm just displaying an image. And then finally, just having like a Swiper parent control to which I'm passing the child uh, swiper slides control to get uh, the display that I've shown earlier uh, in the demo. So one of the things that need uh, that you need to bear in mind um, that solution is currently using the Instagram Basic Display API, uh, which has the endpoint graph.instagram.com and as the name kind of implies it just allows you to um, to do basic uh, um, functionality like retrieving basic profile information photos videos um, from the user's Instagram account so it's not very feature rich and in case you might want to do something much more advanced, like allowing your user to engage within your app, maybe consider something like the what we call the Instagram Graph API. And the endpoint is a little bit different, graph.facebook.com. But for my scenario, the requirements was quite simple to uh, just have the Instagram feed onto a SharePoint page with uh, no advanced features. But the number one limitation, uh, which is um, it has a limit of calls you can do per hour per user per app. Um, that uh, was something which I needed to find a solution around it, because if you have uh, if if you're planning to deploy the application for uh, 500 users, for example, and if all of them wants to use the app at the same time, there's a high chance that it's not going to work 50 percent of the time. So um, what I've done is um, I've used a Sigil uh, Power Automate flow. Um, now there's a template if you want to go and check it out. It's called the uh, Get Instagram Feed into SharePoint list. So Power Automate, if you create a flow and look for it, it will come up and then you can use it and um, configure it to point to the correct SharePoint list. Um, and you can set the Sigil even if you set it five every five minutes uh it's not going to reach with 240 calls per hour um 240 calls per hour limit um and the other advantage of using uh power to make for a, um yeah i'm using a bat template uses the uh, uh, independent publisher connector so um, when you create a connection to the connector you can you specify the access token and in that way it kind of keeps the access token secure as well and in the end i'm just using some uh, view formatting view formatting in the list is just json mixed with html and css to kind of get the rendering as a picture i've shown in this slide on the right um, so that kind of fulfill the requirements which the uh, end user had. Um, the disadvantage of using the view formatting was um, it doesn't support video tag, but again, uh, it was not uh, that major. Um, and then the other one, we couldn't change the entire background color of this view web part to be transparent. Again, that was kind of um, minor because the background was white so it wasn't an issue um, and then uh, by default SharePoint doesn't allow us to render 
images from um, from of from third party domains, uh, so you might have to update the HTML field security settings to allow the images to display from the Instagram CDN. But again, I don't know whether that's going to be an issue, but otherwise you can amend uh, the flow so that you can download the image into a column of type image and amend the view formatting accordingly. Um, otherwise, yeah, the alternative could have been like use an Azure function to do the backend call uh, on a schedule basis and using SPFX to improve the design. But for me, yeah, just a low code kind of solution kind of work in the end. Yeah, so uh, this is a list of references. Um, if you want to look more into uh, the uh, Instagram basic display API documentation, as well as the Instagram graph uh, API documentation and see which one work. And I'll put a link uh, to um, the independent publisher connector if you want to have a look. Uh, and I will say uh, thank you like to Andre Large uh, because I've used one of these sample and simplified it to be able to achieve the grid-like structure. And um, yeah, and then in the, the link in the end is a blog post um, which uh, um, uh, recently got published, but it kind of go uh, through the steps which you can go through to implement using a low-code solution. Yeah, so that's it from me. Thank you. Fantastic demo. And again, there's a lot of hard work that, that went into this, uh, many contributions. And also, thank you for recognizing and working uh, with the contributions of others. So that's wonderful. And again, everyone, please uh, give a warm hand to Rishmi. It was her first presentation.